Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to me. Toasters, toasters, how's it going? Just out enjoying this Texas weather. Feels good, man. Feels really good. It's probably about 80 degrees. Feels good, man, enjoying the cigar. And uh, just enjoying life, man, relaxing, man. I, I feel really, really good. But I want to talk about white guilt, supposedly white guilt, uh, victimization, or victimism, enabling, and uh, white supremacy. This stuff is not always black and white. <clears throat> it really isn't, man. And uh, a lot of us, it, and even maybe myself included, don't have a a full and accurate understanding of what all this is, or what these words, these phrases, these terms mean. But I just want to give you my take because a few things have happened recently. And I'm like, man, this stuff, this stuff is an issue. It's really an issue, man, that we got to really tackle as a people, as a nation. And uh, it's got to move forward, all of us. So, I got this, uh, we'll say an associate, I won't say a friend, I don't use that term loosely. We'll say associate. A white guy, Italian dad, Irish mom. And this brother is entertaining, man. He, uh, notice I said brother. This brother is entertaining. Man, his personality is just out the roof, man. Actually, it seems like this dude is out of movie. Like, he's Italian, Italian personality, like, like out the movie. <laughs> but it's, it's wild, the accent, all of that. The bravado, you know, the whole nine, right? Like stereotypical Italian. And uh yeah, man, we met at my little spot across the street. You know, I'm out, I'm always out smoking my cigar, enjoying the weather. And so we got to speaking one day. And uh, just built a rapport. I won't say friendship because it takes time with me, you know, to say friend. But we built a rapport. It's been about a month now. And uh, he's a comedian. And I don't mean that in jest or in a facetious way. But like he, he actually, he actually uh, performs. That's the trolley coming down. But uh, he actually performs. And uh, he wants me to check him out and potentially invest. If you follow my channel long enough, you know I've invested in a couple of comedians. I managed a couple of comedians before. And um, it's a small world, man. I'm in Uptown, and the club I was co-owner of is in Arlington. So that's about 30 minutes apart. And so uh, he is actually going to perform at that club September 3rd and so uh, it's just ironic so we got to chop it up by, about that it's just like man it's a small world right what are the chances I'm going to run I run into this guy meet this guy and he's going to perform uh, at the club I co-owned at one time uh, but there are no accidents so we're building you know within this month we're building uh, 
he'll hit me up. Hey, hey, come meet me over at the spot, man. You know, have a pop. That's what he says. Let's have a pop. That's that's he calls beer pop. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, huge personality, man. But I notice every time we get to talking, it always he always leads it into race and race relations and how white society has done black people so wrong and how uh, it's not fair for blacks and it goes on and on and I will give them pushback you know or make them think objectively from a different angle a different perspective but a few days ago man I just have to tell him bro because he went in about white men and the white society how it's not fair and it's 2022 and we're still going through stuff and this and that and just going on and going on how black men have it black people have it unfairly just really going in right and there was another black gentleman who's my neighbor he was sitting at the table too man and uh and i kept telling the guy you know uh jc that's his name i kept telling jc i said man i'm not a victim i said don't don't show no pity for me I'm not a victim. I kept saying that. So finally he said, well, Stacey, I know you're not a victim, uh, but everybody's not like you. I said, that's true. Everybody's not like you. I said, but not all white men are the same either. Not all white men uh, have an upper hand, not above me. Not all black men are, or don't have the hand I'm dealt. We all get different hands is how you deal with it. You can mess up a good hand. You can turn a, a supposedly bad hand to a, a, a great hand. It's like it's like cards, man. It's like spades. It's what you do with it. And it's all about confidence and balance. That's how spades is, man. You can get too cocky thinking you got a, a, a moon. Like, you got to run the board. And you get over, over overconfident and mess it up. A wrong play or your partner makes a wrong play, man. That hand is messed up. Or it can look like you got to go bored. You just got a big four. You don't have a great hand at all. And you end up getting five or six. And you end up setting the other team. Like, that's how that thing goes. That's life. So it, there is no complaining. There is technically no bad hand. It's all about your perspective, your confidence, your accountability. Pushing through. I said, but I'm not a, I'm not a victim, man. And... He's a big sports guy. He knows a lot of guys I grew up with. And he's older than me, so he knows a lot of guys older than me that grew up, you know, in that in that, that little league and high school system that I know, athletes. And um, and he said he grew up in the hood and grew up around a lot of black people. And so, you know, uh, he feels like he has a different relationship than most white men to, to the black community. Uh... You know, so I take it all in. But he likes to use sports as an analogy to prove his point, which is cool. I do that sometimes. I do that a lot, too, actually, with boxing. So it's cool. So he said, well, check this out. He said, you remember Tyron Taylor, the quarterback for the Bills, the Buffalo Bills? He said, man, Tyron Taylor uh, put in work got to start a job, got a big contract, and he messes up. He's messing up one game. I can't remember the game. He said he's messing up one game. They take him out and put in someone else. And this guy, this white quarterback, throws four or five interceptions right away. They put Tyron Taylor back in, and they win the game, and they leave Tyron Taylor in for the rest of the season, and they make the playoffs. He said, but why does Tyron Taylor have to go through that? Why do they bench him so quickly? Why do they do that? Why do they do this? I said, that doesn't necessarily have to do with race. Maybe they didn't trust him. And he goes on to say, you know how they didn't, the whites don't believe blacks can play the quarterback position. I said, well, by the time Tyron Taylor was quarterback, we were past that. Man, I think Doug Williams proved that. Uh, Randall Cunningham, McNabb, uh, Several other black quarterbacks have proven that. So we're way past that. Uh, 
maybe they just didn't trust them, but you can't just automatically associate that or attach that to race. You know, that's not fair. And he said, but why do blacks have to do so much more? Why is the bar set so high for them, but it's set so low for the white man? He said, y'all gotta be two times, three times better to get to where y'all wanna be. He said, that's not right. I said, that's not true though. I said, there are blacks who reach a high level, who coast, who coast, who mail it in, and they are at a, at a high level, making great money at a high level, but they're mailing it in. I say it happens all the time in corporate America. It happens in sports. Since you want to use sports, we'll take Michael Vick. We're not talking about the dog fighter. We'll take Michael Vick admitting that he did not study, admitting and, 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 and people saying he was the last to come in, right? And the first to leave practice. He didn't put in the work. But this guy's a quarterback. The NFL quarterback. I said, but Mike never got benched. He coasted. And, and, and Mike and Mike Vick is a black man. So why was he able to do that? By Tyron Taylor, who didn't coast, who who overexceeded, overachieved, was not able to do that. But they're both black. And he got it. He said, talent. I said, there you go. Talent. Talent will allow you to get to places, regardless of your work ethic, and will allow you to coast and reap benefits. Talent. I said, but it will not give you longevity. It will not give you respect. It won't. And if Tyron Taylor wants a job in the NFL, as a coach, as an executive, I believe he can have that because he's shown his work ethic. He's shown his work ethic. He's shown his discipline. He's shown that he's an overachiever, you know, or he at least met his potential. Mike Vick was an underachiever. He didn't study. He didn't put in the work. He didn't put in the time. He just relied on his talent. But they're both black. And I doubt if Mike Vick can get a job as a coach or as an exec in the NFL, because that's not something you want to model. You do not want to model uh, an Allen Iverson either, you know, because these are guys that are just straight talented, man. These these are these are one, one, once in a lifetime type talents. Everybody's not going to have that talent, so that's not something you want your child to model after. You take things from them, but you want somebody. You want your child to look at somebody that has a good work ethic because that's most likely what they're gonna to have to depend on their work ethic, being astute, being prepared. There's so many, there's so many Mike Vicks, there's so many AIs. You know, now you get some guys who are very, very, very special, like a Michael Jordan, like a uh, like a LeBron James, like a Kobe Bryant, right? With the work ethic and the talent. These guys are, are very, very special. Push, push themselves to the limit. But even, even, even Michael Jordan, man, you know, stayed up gambling, doing playoff games, drinking, smoking, doing play. But he was so talented and so competitive, he got by with a lot of that. But we see how he is as an executive. Not so good, right? Because his perspective is different. You know. Uh, I think Kobe would have made a great executive because of his work ethic and discipline. I don't think Shaq can make a good executive or coach. Shaq is another guy who coached it. Kobe always complained about Shaq's work ethic, but his talent got him by. So black guys get the coach too, like just like white guys get the coach. There's some hardworking white guys. There's some hardworking black guys. So there is no victim. There is no... This guy's treated unfairly. He's not getting what he needs to get. No. You can get anything you want to get. Anything. Uh, there are no victims. Now, JC told me when he was coaching Little League that the black coaches would tell him, JC, man, these kids are taking advantage of you. These black kids are taking advantage of you because you're enabling them. They know you feel sorry for them and you're making them victims. 
so they're getting over on you. Don't do it. I said, that's true, JC. They were telling you right. I said, where are you treating them fairly? See, when we say, is someone treating someone fairly, we automatically think they're intentionally treating them bad. They're leaning to the dark side, supposedly, the negative side, what we deem negative. But if you're not treating me badly, if you're enabling me, if you're not treating me fairly, you're enabling me, that's bad. And if you're enabling me because of my race, that's racism. You may think you're liberal, you may think you're, you're fair, you may think you're about justice and peace and, and uh, trying to uplift the black man, but if you're enabling me, if you're not treating me fairly, that's racism. Listen, don't give me what I don't deserve from both ends. Don't take from me that's not yours. Don't give me what's not mine. Just treat me fairly, and I'm going to go get what I'm going to get. I'm going to eat what I kill. You know, I just need opportunity. And that's what all of us need, just opportunity. But, uh, and the other gentleman sitting at our table, he said, JC, this is your white guilt speaking. He said, yeah, man, but I just feel so bad. I feel so bad. It's not fair. I just, I just get sad. I said, what is that going to do? So you complaining, you feeling sad, you feeling this white guilt. What is that going to do? He said, nothing. I said, man, if you really want to make an impact, don't complain about uh, hiring practices and what you, what you deem is unfair or what you uh, think is being done in corporate America on the job force, what you think unfairness is, what you think racism is occurring. You become a boss. Don't criticize bosses. You become a boss. And let's see what you do. Let's see what you do. And he said, you're right. I said, because you're looking from the outside. But you become a boss. You you fight your way to the top and become a boss. You know? And he's like, well, man. He's like, be honest, man. I'm an I'm a underachiever. He said, I slack. He said, I'm lazy. He said, but I still get by. I said, it's black guys like that too, brother. <laughs> Do you think all black people that uh, reach a certain level or whatever are, are hardworking or disciplined? No, man. You're saying, basically, you're saying we're less than that. You know, we don't uh, have spiritual favor, godly favor. We don't have, uh, uh, we just don't have the talent to make it to where we want to get. And that's God, like I said, that's guys that slack, black guys that slack. That still reach a high level. You, you gotta get out more, man. You gotta talk to more people. And you'll see this. It goes both ways. That's just the way it is. You know? So I think he got it. But I'm cool. I'm sure we'll have to revisit. That's the trolley again. I'm sure we'll have to revisit again. And that's cool. Like I said, man, I'm wearing my shorts. Uh, it's about patience. Patience is love. Love is patience. And so uh, we all got different experiences and perspectives. Depending on how we were reared and uh, what we've seen and experienced. So it is what it is. Uh, maybe I could be rigid. and I, Maybe I need to show more leniency. But uh, I think it's my belief as a parent, as a coach, as a manager, as a friend, as a uh, neighbor, it's better for me to be rigid and then come down a bit opposed to being lenient, being very lenient but then trying to instill discipline and order and boundaries. No, let me set boundaries. Let me set order. Let me set discipline and accountability. And then I'll uh, come down a bit if I need to. But it's almost impossible to be lenient and set low boundaries, a low bar, and try to instill some type of order in any facet of life, man, in any, in any position. That's almost impossible. 
That's just my take on that. So, this brother, like I said, brother, JC, Italian guy, he's doing more harm than good. And the black coaches he coached with told him that. He's doing more harm than good. I know he think he's uh, being righteous, but you're just complaining and your view is skewed, man. It's very biased. It's not objective. And uh, you're really disrespecting the intelligence and the fight of uh, black people. And you know, anything we're all hardworking, which is just not true. And to think all whites are not hardworking is not true either. It's just not true. And so uh, people are people. Are there some injustices? Are there some, some biases in policy and government policy? Yeah. Well, listen, man, I ain't gonna complain. You either gotta fight to change it. Uh, and I believe fighting change behind the scenes in black and white, in relationships, in higher places. I really ain't for the marching and picketing and all this. That ain't, that ain't my personality, but there is a place for that. And there are people for that, but that's not what I'm here for. So, uh, you know, cool guy. But, you know, we got to be careful with that, man. That enabling, that victimism, that white guilt. We got to be careful with that mess, man. That mess will handicap you. Man, it'll stop you from reaching your full potential if you buy into that shit. That's why I have to tell him, man, I ain't no victim. Don't pity me. And he wasn't, he wasn't really talking to me per se because he was like, everybody's not like you. But he's going to tell a black guy that all black guys are not like me. I, I, I have a, a better relationship with black guys than he has. I am a black guy. You know, I was raised with black guys. I am the black community. But see, that's that, that's that, uh, that that's sort of racism too. See, racism isn't always direct in your face. That's racism for him to say that. That's ignorance for him to say, basically, all black guys are not like me. He's talking to a black guy. Think about that. But it's okay. It's okay, man. This is a learning experience. Patience is love. Love is patient. And so that's something I got to work on all the time, man. I don't bat a thousand on that. I work on that all the time. The cigar went out, but I work on that all the time. You know, it's got to be aware and alert. But that stuff can frustrate you. With people can frustrate you. And I can frustrate people. You know? So I have to show the understanding and the patience I would want to receive. Because I'm not the easiest person to get along with. <clears throat> I know that. Now, on the other side, check this out. There's an older guy who's a neighbor of mine. He's like 80. I met him while smoking a cigar one time. And uh, he just stopped by and started talking to me. Man just gave me his whole history. This guy's well-traveled, done a lot seen a lot man met a lot of people accomplished a lot accomplished a lot man this guy's like 80 man got a 20 something year old black girlfriend right white guy 80 year old white guy 20 something year old fine white chick fine you know we can assume we know what that is <laughs> but I won't do that because I don't know for a fact right it is what it is right but uh so we, we, we chop it up peri periodically. So one one day, one morning, I'm out front. I'm stretching. I'm about to get my workout in. I'm about to get my run in, <clears throat> get my walk in. So he stops by because he walks every morning too. He's very active. He walks and uh, he stops by as I'm stretching. And he says, uh, well, first we get to talking about, you know, what, what I do as a workout and things like that. And he needs, he's saying he needs to get back lifting weights. 80 something years old, man. This guy's lean and mean, though. He's lean. Yeah. He's lean and uh, he probably got a six pack, man. Yeah, he's in shape, man. He's a, he's a, uh, he was a, a world class athlete in his day. And he coached uh, tennis. So he's a tennis coach. 
uh, in shape guy, man, in shape. So uh, he was asking about my workout and just telling me, tell me what he does and what he needs to get back doing, get back to doing. But he looks at me and he says, and this is an 80 plus year old white guy, and he says, uh, you got a penitentiary body. And I don't even know what that really means. I didn't jump to conclusions. All I could do is kind of picture guys I've seen in the penitentiary. Although I've never been to the penitentiary, just things I've seen in the movies or TV or dudes that have come home that I've known uh, that have been to the penitentiary. And so I kind of pictured that in my head as he said that. And so I kind of think I know what he's talking about. Like, I'm big up top. Like, I'm, I'm, like I got no neck. I'm just not showing a little neck because I'm losing weight, but... That's, that's men on my side, man. man. Men on my dad's side, man. We got no neck. We all shoulders and chest. So when I really started work, work well, anytime I start really working out, my chest, my shoulders get really broad. Uh, I start to go in, my sides go in, my stomach's flattening, but my legs are skinny. I got basketball, uh, Hooper's legs, man. And so uh, I'm thinking that's what he's, he, he means. <laughs> so I wasn't offended, you know. And like I said, we had a report where we sat and chopped it up for about two hours, man. We speak periodically. And him having a black girlfriend means nothing to me, cause yeah, you can still be racist and uh, have a white, have a black wife or a white wife or whatever. Be black and have a white spouse or whatever. You can still be racist. You can still have some messed up views, right? And so that means nothing to me. But uh, what I respect, man, he doesn't pull in the punch a straight shooter. And I know some people would say, man, that's racism. Why would you say you got a penitentiary about it? Well, it's all about how you think. Because there are white guys in the penitentiary, too. There's Mexicans, Asians, every nationality and ethnicity in the penitentiary. So for me, to, if I was to automatically think this racism would be ignorant on my part because I would be saying there's only blacks in the penitentiary, which is just not true. But some people would got offended by that. But I didn't take it like that, man. I, didn't, I never saw that in the spirit or anything like that. And uh, to be honest, man, he's more, just talking to him, he's more objective and fair in his approach than JC is. And he and I don't, and an old man and I never talk about race. We've never had a conversation about race. Even though, you know, uh, I know his girlfriend's black and he knows I know she's black. We've never talked about race. He doesn't have white guilt. And he's much older. We all <laughs> got to do better. We all got to put ego to the side, man. And uh, just look at things objectively. Try to. And uh, if we're going to tr be truly fair. Let's just, let's just deal with each other on principles, man. Character and principles. And if you got to gripe about something, you got to gripe about race or whatever or gender relations, do the work, put the work in. You become the boss, you become the head. You work your way up and stop complaining on the sideline. Do what you think needs to be done instead of judging people in charge of people with these titles. You do the work. You put in the work. But I want to tell my white brothers, man, and white sisters, be careful about that uh, white guilt. Because that could be a form of racism. And to my black brothers and sisters and my Hispanic and Asian, all of them, man. Uh, watch out for this people trying to victimize you, make you seem less than in a subtle way, and make you a victim. But it looks like they're showing empathy, but they're really hurting you. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into that mess, man. So go get yours. There are no victims, only players. That's it, man. Only players, losers and winners. Losers and winners, man. 
uh, you're the shit, I'm the shit. Nothing can stop us. As always, love. Peace.